Have you ever wondered what the best way to start Yukon is? Well, stick around because we're going to go through it step by step. Welcome to Yukon, everybody. Let's get started. Let's pull out that F750 and get it set up for the adventure. First thing I'm going to do is change the tires to chain tires. There will be some icy hills that we need to climb on this trip and we'll install the custom pickup bed and the small roof rack. First things first, let's take a look at the map. Flooded Foothills is a fairly large map. It's a square and we're going to head up the west side of the map and get started over there. Leaving the garage, we're going to take a right and there's a task right out front. Let's get it activated right away. Yukon is a very beautiful region. There's a lot of ice, snow and mud, and steep hills to climb. In a recent poll on the channel, I asked what your favorite year one region was, and only 11% of you chose Yukon. Hopefully by the end of this series, we can bump that number up a little bit, and you'll get a chance to see firsthand just how beautiful this region can be. A lot of people don't care for it because the contracts are enormous, but hopefully I can show you some ways to cut down on some of the work by using strategies with logistics and planning to make it just a little bit easier. We'll get this arrogance task activated where we need to pull this little Tuz 166 up to the shacks near a spring. We're not going to pull it up there just yet, but we can yank it out of the water and get it set up for when we come back. Let's cross the river here on the rocks and there's another task on the other side. You can see it off to the right there. We're going to pass it and follow the shoreline down and go get an upgrade. This upgrade is the active suspension for the Kolob 74941. That's the truck that you can get from the beginning of the game that has the long front overhang. Now that we have that, let's get turned around. We're going to backtrack and go get that task activated that we drove past. These currents, they will sweep you downstream and flip your truck over, so you have to be very careful when crossing the river and make sure that you're not driving in anything that's too deep. Let's get this task activated. This is the abandoned trailer task where we need to pull this scout fuel trailer up into the mountains. It does have a little bit of fuel in it, but it's not full. Just like all the other mission fuel trailers, it will need to be turned in with 10% remaining. We can leave it right here while we pick up the Tuz and continue up through the ravine. There's a rock road here. You just have to be real careful when you're driving down it because there are some spots that are uneven and you can fall off pretty easily into that river. And everything on my left is all breakable ice. So try not to drive out into the middle of it if possible. Okay, we got that one done. Let's open up the map here real quick. We're gonna make a mark on a frozen waterfall and drive up into the hills. We'll go get that first watchtower. So we can get turned around. We'll go back out to where the water is. And we're gonna hang a left, drive right up this frozen waterfall. At the top, we can turn right, and when you go across these rocks, take it real easy. 
Now that we have the custom pickup bed on the F750, there's a lot of extra weight and it doesn't take a whole lot to smash this truck up. So just drive real nice. The roads here are extremely muddy and if possible, try to drive off to the side, through the trees even, and you'll get through here a lot easier. Up here at the top you can see there are some cargo loading areas. This region gives us the ability to deconstruct buildings to get a limited source of cargo and that's something new that we haven't encountered yet so it should be pretty interesting. Let's get this task activated. This is the camping gone wrong task. We need to pull a Scout 800 from the bottom of the hill back up to where we're parked now. So we'll make a mark on the watchtower and a mark on the Scout and we'll head down the mountainside. First thing we're gonna do is get that watchtower. Let's turn around and follow this road out through the rocks. This region is really beautiful. There's some far reaching landscapes that you can see. It definitely has more altitude than anything else that we've encountered yet, and it's pretty cool. Now we're gonna take a shortcut across the hillside here through the trees. It's just a lot easier to go this way than it is to go down and follow the road around. A lot of these roads in the mountains, you have to climb up rocks when you're going up them, and they're pretty difficult. So I like to find my own way, make things just a bit easier. Driving on the side of this hill, you gotta make sure that you are prepared to winch to these trees so you don't roll over. And here's the watchtower. Let's get our first look of the region. Okay, let's follow this road down the hill. When going down, you wanna make sure you use your handbrake. You can just leave it on and accelerate through it. It'll pull the front tires down and keep the back tires straight. Right down at the bottom here, you can see there's the Scout 800 flipped over. It does have raised suspension and mud tires installed, so that will help quite a bit going back up the mountainside. We need to get it flipped over so we can pull it back up the hill. The second part of this task requires us to refuel and repair the Scout 800, so let's just take care of that right away, and it should help it to be able to drive itself. Now normally, I pull this thing up the hill from the back. It seems like it goes up a lot easier that way, but because of the way that it got rolled over, I'm just gonna grab it from the front, and this will still work, it's just a little bit more challenging. The all-wheel drive is not turned on, so the back wheels are the only ones helping. There are some uneven spots here at the beginning and a little bit of deep mud, so you just have to be careful that you don't roll your truck over. I do have the autonomous winch installed on the F750, so I'm not too concerned. Either way, just try to take it easy. Let's take a right up here. If we were to continue going straight, that would go up to the watchtower, and we're not heading up there. But following the road to the right will take us back up the way we came down when we were headed to the watchtower. You can see those back tires are just to spin and they actually help more when the truck is turned around. And you can see the wheel tracks there to the left. That's where we cut across the hillside to get that watchtower. So now we're back up where we started. Okay. 
and just up ahead here you can see is the drop off. Just try to stay out of the wheel tracks, that's the muddiest part of the road. So once we pull it into the box, now we just need to top off the fuel and the task will be complete. Great job. Whenever I'm using fuel from the F750, I always try to empty out the small roof rack that's above the cab first, just to help with any top heavy weight. It seems like it's a little bit more stable. Let's start tracking the abandoned trailer task, and we're gonna head back down to that Scout fuel carrier and haul it up to the house on top, so we can make a mark on both of them. Yukon is also the first region that introduces crafting, so we're going to have to haul materials to different crafting areas in order to create the materials we need for contracts. We can go around that rock. It's a lot easier than trying to go up over the top. If you do fall into that river, sometimes you can get back out if you're not tipped over. All right, we're back to the Scout fuel carrier. We're gonna take some fuel out of it. It has 198 liters and we need to leave at least 90 remaining. Since our small roof rack is empty, I'm just gonna take an even 100 out and that leaves 98 and that's close enough for me. Now we can go drop this thing off. I found the easiest way for me to get to the house on top is to cut up through the trees here and get up to the top of the mountain range and we can just drive across that way. It is a little bit deep snow going through here and these bushes are tough to drive through, not to mention it's a pretty steep mountainside. So there are some spots where you might have a struggle going up it just because of how steep it is, but we should be able to get up there just by wiggling the front tires around when we start losing traction, that oftentimes helps. You can see the rocks up here are a little bit icy. These chain tires will help quite a bit getting up over the top of them. There are different ways you can go up the side of this mountain. I'm just picking one. I'm not necessarily saying this is the best way to get up here. If you're struggling with it, just move down a ways and try a different area. But now you can see once you get up to the top, there's a nice flat spot up here right on the edge of the map. And we'll just follow this up, being careful not to flip over. Of course, there isn't anything up here to winch to, obviously. So you want to try to take it easy. That Scout fuel carrier, if it starts whipping around, the weight of it can flip your truck sideways, so be aware of that as well. Right up on the top of the peak here, you can get a nice look out at the region. It's pretty impressive and then just take it real easy going down the other side. When the trailer starts rolling to the side like that, that's when you have to be careful. Now you can see our marker is just up ahead through the trees. There are some spots in the snow where there are large crevices like this one here, so you do have to watch out for those as well, just to make sure you don't get stuck or flip over in them.
Now coming out the other side of the trees, you can see the house on top here. We'll just pull it into the box and be done with it. All right, from here, we're gonna go to this other little house that's right by the lake here. And then after that, we're gonna get the next watchtower. So we'll just cut through the trees. That house is right on the other side of the hill. It's no big deal getting over there. It's a little uneven though, coming out the other side. So just be mindful. You can see there's a task there that we need to activate. This task requires us to pull this International Lodestar down to the middle of the map. We're not going to pull it all the way there, but we can get it most of the way there. The first thing I'm going to do, as you can see, the truck is quite damaged. We want to repair at least the gearbox and put some fuel in it so it can help itself. And I'm going to try to get it turned around because this time we are going to pull this truck backwards. You don't have to, you can pull it forwards as well. There are advantages to either way. Make sure you activate the task while you're up here. Abandoned truck. And then we'll grab onto it and drive across the lake here where it's a little shallow in the middle. And we're going to go through the trees and go up and get that watchtower. Coming out the other side here, the snow is a little bit deep. It definitely would be easier to get through here with off-road tires rather than the chain tires, but we would struggle quite a bit on the icy hills if we didn't have the chains. So I'm just gonna put up with it. We can still get there, it's just gonna take a little longer through the snow. Sometimes it can be easier to drive on the stone. You just gotta keep in mind that the stone is icy, even if it doesn't really look like it, it's pretty slick. Some of the branches will give you a hard time too, so just try to stay as far away from them as possible. I'm gonna cut to the right a little bit. I started getting kind of tipsy here and I thought I was gonna lose it, especially when the Lodestar slid down the hill. I thought it was gonna whip me over, but I managed to get out of it just in the nick of time. And right on the other side of the trees is the road that leads up to the watchtower. So let's get this discovered and get another look of the region. And there is a contest right on the other side of it. I do encourage everybody to try this contest at least once. It's called Down, and you have to race down the mountainside. I'm not gonna do it because I'm leaving the path about halfway down and I wouldn't be able to complete it. We're going to make a mark on the support the meteorologist task. That's our next stop. So going down this hill, if you are doing the contest, you want to gas it and kind of get going as fast as possible. Because right at the bottom of the ice here, there's a rock jump and you can jump right over the top of all of this. It's pretty fun, actually. This time is one minute, two seconds. Gold is 1 minute 35. Alright, here we go. Down. Activated. This is the part where I'm looking forward to see. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here.
but then you'd have to continue down the road and we're not doing that. So we'll cut off the road going left up through the trees. These branches can be a little sticky, especially on the Lodestar. Just try to yank it through if possible. And it looks like it ran out of fuel already. I need to make sure that gas tank doesn't rupture, so let's get that repaired as well. There's only three points left before I put more fuel into it. And once again, I'm just gonna dump everything from my small roof rack into my truck just to take some of the weight off. Let's continue on up over the top of this. There's kind of a steep ridge here. You might need to winch yourself across it. And then I'll have to grab that Lodestar and pull it up. The F750 does not have the best brakes when you have all of these add-ons installed on the truck. There's just so much weight. Let's get it up to the top and then I'm going to back up and make the winch a little shorter. Okay, let's go through the trees. That task is just up ahead. We made it. Let's get it activated. This task will spawn one service spare part down at the bottom of the mountain that we'll need to haul up here. So you do want to make sure you get it activated on this trip around just so that it does spawn and you don't have to come up here again. Opening up the map, you can see there's another frozen waterfall. This time we're going to go down it, so it should be a little bit easier. It's pretty muddy if you follow the road, so I like to just cut through the building in the dumpster there and drive through the snow. And we've made it to the waterfall. There is actually water running down it, which is kind of cool. It looks like the Lodestar ran out of fuel again. We're not going that much further, so I'm not going to top it off. When you get to the Y in the road, you can go either left or right. I'm just going to go right because it's a little bit closer to where I want to leave it, but either way is fine. And you can see there's another house down here that you can deconstruct to get wooden planks from. The cargo is limited, so make sure that you don't accidentally spawn it into the manual loading zone and delete the cargo. Now if you follow the road up to the left, you'll see there's a warehouse there. And we're going to go past it to the right and follow this rock road around the ridge. Heading back up into the hills, there's another task up here that we can activate. This is the Lonely Island task, where we will need to rescue a little Don 71 that got stuck out in the marsh. Let's continue down the road. The logging station is just up ahead. We will need to come down here with logging trucks and get loaded. You can get medium logs from here. There aren't any long logs though.
we need to get to the other side of the river and you can take a right and cross right here but there are some pretty big boulders so we'll take this little road that goes out the backside and follow the shoreline down there's a bridge at the end of it the bigger trucks can do it without much issue but i don't really want to attempt it with the f750 because the current is so strong we might get stuck out there and it might wash us downstream some of these big rocks you'd need to drive around by going out into the river a little ways. Just try not to get too far out. And now just up ahead to the right is the bridge I was talking about. This is probably the sketchiest bridge in the entire game. You gotta be real careful crossing it. If you accidentally drive off of it, you can easily get stuck and there isn't anything to winch to to get yourself pulled back out. So just take it real slow and precise. We made it. Now that we're on the other side of the river, there's another task up ahead we can activate, so we'll follow the shoreline back until we get to the house. That house is just up ahead to the right through the trees. You might actually be able to turn right and go up the hill there and come into the back side of it. I didn't go that way. I decided to drive through the deep mud instead. You're probably going to have to winch yourself through this part. Okay, we'll hang a right, and just around the corner is that task. This is the don't do a barrel roll task, where we need to haul that scout flatbed that's loaded with the fuel up to the top of the mountain. We're not going to do that right now, so we'll just leave it there. Turning around, we're going to drive up this frozen waterfall. This one actually has a pretty strong current of water coming down and a lot of big rocks that when you drive over them, they roll underneath your truck. So it can be difficult. If you don't have chain tires, it's very unlikely that you'll make it up this. Let's get refueled. This would probably be a great spot to have a preemptive winch, just to make sure you don't accidentally roll down the side of the mountain. Right here by this red sign, we can stop and take a look at the map. You can see that watchtower. We're going to hang a left, drive through the hills here, and get out into the open area on top of this mountain. Alright, now you can see along the side of this road there is a frozen lake up here. Most of that ice is breakable, so be real careful. But if we follow the road up a little ways, off to the right is another logging station. This is where we'll be able to get the long logs that we need.
We're gonna go past it. It's real muddy. Try to stay on solid ground. And then we have a section of deep snow to drive through. So if you're winching yourself across, oof. Make sure you let go of the winch before you drive past that pole. And out the other side, it's not too bad. We can cut out onto the ice here at the end and just follow the edge of it. There's another task here. It's the aid thy neighbor task where we need to deliver this scout fuel carrier. This one is completely full. We're not going to turn it in right away. We're going to use some of that fuel for logging. So let's turn around and take it back over to that logging station and we'll just stage it there. You can follow that road, but it's pretty deep. So I'm just going to head back out onto the ice. We'll pull the trailer back through that deep snow. And then stay on solid ground as much as you can. And we can just leave it right here by the loading area. That'll be a good spot for us to refuel when we come up here with the big trucks. Now we need to go across the frozen lake. There are a couple spots where we can drive across. This is one of them. and then just stay on the edge. There's another task up here to the left, right where this house is. This is the failed delivery task. We'll get that one activated. It spawns some cargo out on the lake that we need to pick up with a mini crane. So let's continue back down the road and go get that watchtower. To the left there is the rolled steel factory, where you can turn metal beams into metal rolls. And there's also a trailer store there. So if your truck is damaged at this point, you can pull in there and pick up a service trailer and get repaired. That next watchtower is just up to the top of the mountain there on the right. We're going to take a shortcut up to it. The road that leads up to it is like a switchback on stone and it's really sketchy. Going this way is quite a bit easier. We'll just sneak through the trees and get out on the top, just like we did before on the other side of the map. There's some really great views when you get up to these high altitudes like this. Now you can see that watchtower there. We're going to come down the hill right behind it. Now you can turn around and go back out the way we just came, but I'd like to show you that road that I was just talking about, so we're going to go down it. It's definitely a lot easier to go down than to come up. You got to go real slow so you don't accidentally bounce off of it. It makes a zigzag pattern down the hill. So when you're taking the corners, just grab onto a tree or something to winch yourself while you're turning around. Yeah. 
yeah, it's real rough through here. You gotta be careful. There's definitely a lot more technical driving in this region. I guess they figured it was time to put our skills to the test. But we made it down. Now can you imagine going up that hill? Alright, now that we're out at the bottom, we're back to the road. Just up ahead here is that house where we picked up the scout fuel trailer. We're gonna go past it and follow the road back down. Let's follow the road down the hill. And at the bottom here, there's a pretty muddy section, but the smaller scouts kind of float over the top of it. If you come through here with one of the bigger trucks, you're definitely going to struggle through this. Off to the right, there's a warehouse loading area, and we're going to take a left and head up to the gateway to the second map. There's also a free maintenance trailer parked over there that you can use. So as you can see, we got a lot of the map opened up. Now let's head into Big Salmon Peak. I definitely like this map more than the first one, but that's just my personal preference. Okay, up ahead here is the garage. We're going to run up and get it opened up. While we're here, I'm going to swap out the tires and get the UOD2 off-roads back on and we'll head back into flooded foothills to go discover the rest of the map. Everything else from here is going to be deep mud and no ice. I like to get the second garage discovered right away, so I have access to this side of the map without having to drive down the muddy roads to get there. Back to flooded foothills. I'm going to grab this maintenance trailer and pull it out to the road where we can better access it. This will be a good resource when we start doing contracts on this side of the map to get refueled and repaired when needed. So we can just leave it right here and we'll continue on. Let's follow this road back down to the bottom.
There's one watchtower left and some tasks that we still need to activate. Before we get that watchtower, let's run over here to the left and there's a short task that we can accomplish right away. This is one of the vehicles that we'll get for free in the region. It's a small caterpillar forklift. I know I said we wouldn't be getting any new trucks in Yukon and I completely forgot that we're getting two forklifts and the big cat 770G. Let's jump into the forklift. There's a task right here that we can accomplish. Manual unloading practice. We need to load up this pallet of fuel and set it up on the loading site to turn it in. It's been a while since I've used the forklift, so forgive me if I'm a little rusty. You need to get the front of the forks down into the ground to get underneath this pallet. Then we'll just set it up on that stand. The forklift is considered a scout, so it can have the autonomous winch installed. And you can also remove the boom arm if you want to use it for just a scout and not for any loading or unloading. And then we'll just back up a little bit and turn the cargo in. And now that task is complete. I'm going to just park this off to the side so we have it over here for a recovery vehicle for the time being, if needed. We'll jump back in the F750 and we're going to go out the back side of this storage zone and we'll follow the railroad tracks up a little ways. And off to the left here, we can cut through the trees and we'll find another upgrade. This is the biggest engine for the Tuz Acteon and the Step 310. So now that we have that, those trucks will be a little bit more powerful. Now we can get turned around and head back the way we came. Let's go get that watchtower. Once we cross the bridge, we'll take another left. You can follow that road around through the water, but the water's pretty deep and it's slow moving. The alternative is to just follow the shoreline here, but you do gotta be careful that you don't flip over on these rocks. Although if we did, that forklift isn't far away. Then we can cross the river on this rock bridge and the watchtower is just up the hill to the left. Let's run up there now and grab that. So now we've got all watchtowers opened up. All we have left to do is activate whatever remaining tasks we can get to easily. The first one is going to be the wooden bridge that's just up the road. And if we follow this road a little bit further, there is a Chevy Kodiak up here that we'll get as well. 
It's part of a task where we need to repair and refuel it. But as you can see, it's not allowing us to repair it because the task hasn't been activated yet. So we'll have to come back for that one later. Let's head back out to the river crossing and we can follow a trail up through the middle of the map. The way this map is constructed, it's basically mountains all the way around the outside edge and a low area in the middle that's all mud. So depending on where you're heading is going to make the difference for what tires you choose to use. I would say use anything that's a good off-road or mud tire when you're in the middle, down in the bottom, and potentially use your chain tires for anything that's going to be done around the edge up on the mountains. The mud through this area gets real sloppy. Let's follow the river down around these rocks. Just try not to drive off the edge into the deep stuff. And up ahead here, you can see there's a pipeline. We're gonna cross the river just before we get to it. I'm gonna enter from upstream a little ways because that current will push me down. And there are some trees you can winch to to help you get across. Let's cross the river again, and there's a section of the pipeline that's down where we can get to the other side of it. So we'll just take a right and follow this road across the bridge. There's another task up here to the left that we need to activate. This is the flood aftermath task. We'll need to load up two service spare parts that spawn down in the river. So we'll need a mini crane to complete that task. Okay, we'll backtrack and head over by that little pond and there's an upgrade over there that we need to pick up. We'll head back across these bridges to get to the other side. And then once again, I just try to stay off the roads. The roads are definitely the worst on this map. You'll be much better off driving in the grass. Try to find whatever shortcuts you can take through the trees to cut off some time also. Alright, this last upgrade here is the tuned custom suspension for the ANK MK38. So that's going to get that truck way up in the air now. We are going to have to cross the river here, and there are big boulders underneath the water, so it will be a struggle. Just 
try not to stop out in the middle here. The current, as you can see, is already pushing my truck sideways. If you stop, it just gets worse. The bigger trucks don't have as much of an issue getting across. Now out the other side, we're gonna hit this main road and we're back over by the garage where we started everything. As you can see, the garage is right there. So let's follow this road down a ways. There's a few more tasks down here that we need to activate. Just across the river there is where we picked up the Scout 800 at the beginning and hauled it back up to the top of the hill. And we've got a long bridge and a task on the other side here where we need to pull this curtain side trailer out of the river and haul it up the road. I'm not going to attempt that with this truck. It probably could be done, but it'd be a lot easier if we just use a bigger truck. So we'll continue on. We need to go through some of these deep, muddy spots. These areas really slow you down when you're doing work on this map. Just try to avoid them if possible. And you can see off to the left there, this is the ore sorting center. And that big trailer is the rock trailer that we'll need to haul into the other map on the last contract. That should be an interesting experience. There's two of them and they can be a little bit challenging. They're extremely heavy. We'll get this Western bridge task activated. And then we're gonna go down this path a little ways and just cross the river. This is another tricky crossing because of how big the boulders are. Across the river to the left there is where the Kodiak is sitting that we were unable to repair. And the task associated with it is just up ahead. So this is the lost and route task. We'll need to load up two vehicle spare parts that spawn out in the middle of a swamp and haul them back over to where that Kodiak is parked and then restore the Kodiak and we'll get it as a reward. Let's get back on the paved road where that big barn is. That's where we need to haul the curtain side trailer that was tipped over in the river. There is another task over there, but it's real deep mud to get to it and I'm not even gonna activate it yet. We'll activate it when we bring that curtain side trailer over there. There's a gas station up here. We can get topped off while we're rolling through. And this road leads us back over to the railway station where we got the big engine upgrade for the Step 310. I'm not going to follow the road because it's flooded and although we will probably be able to make it through there, it's really slow moving. So instead, I'm going to drive down through the ditch here, go through the trees, and get up on the railroad tracks. There's a trail back here that we can follow. You can see those two vehicle spare parts out there in the swamp. Those are for the lost in route task. There's a landslide here on the tracks. We're going to get it cleared so that in the future we can go through here as an alternative route. And that actually is the road by the power line poles there. It's horrible to drive down. Now you can climb over these rocks. If you can get the front of your truck up far enough, you can winch onto that tree and pull yourself over. Unfortunately, the autonomous winch just isn't long enough to reach it. If we had the advanced winch installed, I think we would be able to. So we're going to have to turn around and go back and take a different path. Let's 
cross the tracks again, we'll head back up by the swamp, and then we can turn off and go up into the hills. The snow does get kind of deep up here in the top, but we shouldn't have any issue with it. We'll just try to avoid the deep spots when possible, and if not possible, we'll just have to winch. There are some buildings up here that we can deconstruct and get materials from. It's just kind of a challenge to get up here and get loaded and then be able to get back down again. Now the path leaving here is a rock path, kind of like the one that we closed out on in Kola Peninsula. Only difference is this one has a really off kilter section right here and you have to make sure that you gas it through there or you can pretty easily slide down the hill and fall off. If you bring any of the bigger trucks up here it's more of a challenge. All right, so we've made a full loop around. We're back to where we found the forklift. We're gonna head back up to the Kodiak and get it repaired since we have this truck in the area. There it is, this time we'll be able to repair it. Let's get the lost and route task activated. And we'll pull up ahead here a little bit and we can repair it. It already has a full tank of fuel, so we won't need to worry about that. Now we have all the tasks activated in flooded foothills, except for one that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. And like I said, we'll go back and activate that when we deliver that curtain side trailer. From here, we'll head back to the other map and get staged at the garage to get ready to discover everything over there. to Big Salmon Peak. On the next episode, we'll get started finding the watchtowers and activating tasks in this map, and also discover the upgrades. We'll see you then. Looking forward to it. Appreciate everybody being here, and thanks for watching.